what were the circumstances of your father parting ways with the Dallas Sheriff's Department, and uh, what do you think Bill Decker's role may have been in that decision? I think that uh, there were some people finding out things, and my father was talking to a few people, especially after he stepped off the curb when somebody shot at him. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think that uh, when he said he got his subpoena from Jim Garrison, he came back from New Orleans and... uh, Bill Decker confronted him, or what my father said, confronted him and said, you go down and talk to anybody? And he said, I was subpoenaed. And uh, he said, I just told what I saw. And he said, well, somebody sure to hell has been talking. And next thing I know, my father was fired. And this was in, uh, what was it, 68, 69? It was uh, 68. So you, you feel that Decker was not too happy with with your father testifying in the Garrison trial. What do you think Decker's reasons would be for him being upset about that? Uh, well, he told everybody stay out of it. Don't talk to nobody. Let uh, the feds and Dallas handle it. And Decker didn't like you disobeying an order. Mm-hmm. He gives you an order, he expects you to follow it, and I think he was told to stay out of it and stand down, and the officers were telling what they knew. You know, that's not obeying his order, so therefore, you're going to suffer the consequences. That, that brings me to uh, Buddy Walters. Yeah. Now, Buddy Walters was the story you told me about your father when the riot had happened. You said, like, during the early days that Buddy Walters maybe yeah, was at right. that riot. And so your father knew him. Is it safe, safe to say they joined the uh, Dallas Sheriff's Department around the same time? Yeah, I think they did. And Buddy Walters was a good friend of my father's because when we had to move to Melothian, Buddy had met him at the county line. Told him, called him, told him, made him at the county line. Now, this is after your father had left the sheriff's department? Yes, this is after he left the sheriff's office. Mm-hmm. And Buddy told him not to come back to Dallas, is what my father said he told him. And, not to come back? Yeah, and that was in 1968, after my father had left the sheriff's department, told him not to come back to Dallas. And uh, then I guess Buddy got a subpoena to go to the garrison deal in Louisiana. Uh, he had been called to, to testify in the garrison trial that was, I guess, set to begin in February of 1969. And yeah. Sheriff Decker had, in January of 1969, had sent Buddy and another officer to a motel room to apprehend um, right. an escaped prisoner, an alleged escaped yeah. prisoner. And when they walked into the motel room, somebody had come out of the bathroom and shot Buddy and killed him. And the newspaper that had reported the story reported that the identification that was found at the scene, the police were searching for that person. And that person actually turned themselves in and said that their identification had been stolen three months prior to it. Mm. So somebody planted his identification at the scene. Well, to make it, it look sounds like, like the same thing happened to Buddy that happened to my father when his friend called him over there and then fell down on the ground and he stepped off the curb. Uh huh. Little setup. Little setup. When uh, Jack Ruby was arrested, he actually had in, on his possession Buddy Walters' pass to the Carousel Club. Ah. Oh. He had yeah. His Buddy Walters had a. Uh, a lifetime pass to the carousel club, and, and Jack Ruby actually had that on his possession when he was arrested. Yeah, I didn't know that. So um, Buddy was on site with, with your father there in Dealey yeah. Plaza, and so your father ran into Buddy, and they were examining the curb. There was somebody that said that they, they felt like a bullet grazed them. And well, they there were pictures taken of a ricocheted bullet off the curb. 
and it was at that location where some pictures were taken, and it appeared to be a, a, a slug, a bullet, in the grass along with some blood and, brain and maybe matter. brain matter and stuff like that next to it. Yeah, it, my father said it was a forty-five slug. Now, why would your father say it was a forty-five slug? What did he, was that some information, Cause buddy? My father, because my father carries a forty-five, and he knows what a forty-five slug looks like. Oh, he and saw it. Did your father he see saw the bullet? Oh, your father saw the bullet. Oh, okay. I, I wasn't aware of that. He told the guy standing there that don't touch that. That's evidence. And, and that's the guy that the guy picked it up. Bent over, guy bent over, picked it up, and walked off with it. Now, that's a, uh, from other information I've come across. I believe that he's been ID'd, ID'd that man, as an FBI agent named Barrett. Well, the FBI said that day they didn't have anybody right. in, in uh, Dallas. And they've never entered any of that in evidence, as far as I'm aware. And Buddy Walter, no. Walters, what happened was when uh, Garrison came forward leading up to his trial, and he was doing television interviews, and he he showed a picture of Buddy and that man picking up what looked to be like a bullet. And, and then Buddy was interviewed about that because his name started popping up in, in, in TV interviews and, and newspaper articles about that. And he denied it. He said that he never, ever saw a bullet. He never uh, said that he saw a bullet. He he said, if if anything, the man that picked something up off the ground, it was probably a piece of skull and then put it into his pocket. But he does admit that the guy picked something up and put it in his pocket and walked away. Right. Now, if he was FBI, that sounds very strange that somebody, you know, he would just reach down pick with up. a bare hand and pick up a right. piece of bloody skull with brains all over it and pick it up and put it in his pocket, and that never entered into evidence. I mean, yeah. you know, so, you know, I doubt that story. I think Buddy was probably doing what Sheriff Decker was telling him to, to shut up and... Yeah, you know, shut up, so don't say nothing, yeah. let them handle it, stay out of it. But Buddy, unfortunately, never got a chance to testify in Garrison's trial because he was no. killed less than a month before he was to testify. Yeah, but my father did give his deposition. Yeah, but your father had, like, what, four or five attempts on his life leading up to that. Oh, yeah. Well, not yeah. five, because the fifth one got him. So, Buddy, when he had that conversation with your father not to come back to Dallas. Yeah, he told him not to come back to Dallas. And it wasn't too long after that that Buddy met his fate at the motel room. Right. That was 68, and you said 69, Buddy was killed, so. Yeah. January 69. Six months later. You had mentioned that you uh, went to New Orleans with your father. Can you just tell us a little bit about how that came about with your father going to meet Jim Garrison? In New Orleans? Uh, we kind of stayed in a hotel, and Jim Garrison had somebody come pick up my father and take him. Now, we walked around the street in New Orleans for a little bit, but I always had a couple of people with us. I don't know who they were. We was only there a couple of days. And he was still working for the sheriff's department at the time. And I think that's what Decker got upset about, that he went to give a deposition when he was still working for the sheriff's department, and Decker had told nobody to talk. So that's probably the reason he got fired. And then it was after that, after he was fired, that he actually testified at Garrison's trial. Is that correct? In New Orleans? I think we went to give the deposition first. While he was still with the Sheriff's Department? While he was still with the Sheriff's Department. And then, then he was fired and we went to Menlothian. And then right after he got fired, or as the Sheriff's record said, he was let go. Because I've, I've looked at my father's jacket down there and it says... He was let go. Mm -hmm. And he tried to go back in 69. He tried to go back to the sheriff's department, and they wouldn't hire him back because that's in his jacket, too. Mm -hmm. So he was pretty tore up about losing his job at the sheriff's department because he believed in the law and believed in honesty and, and integrity. 